Hello, uh, we will briefly uh, discuss how to optimize your uh, SaaS uh, software spend uh, based on accurate uh, usage uh, data discovery. Um, we also have a white paper on this topic and uh, please feel free to send us an email to uh, request that paper. Uh, so why is it important uh, to get software usage? Uh, we thought this quote uh, on the Adobe uh, message board site was great. I'll uh, just read it quickly. Come on, Adobe. I get why you don't want us to know when expensive licenses aren't being used because we'll cancel them and you'll lose money. But really, in this day and age, I thought transparency was the way to a customer's heart emoji. Um, but also from a practical point of view, uh, well, that was practical, but uh, Gartner says that uh, in their survey of uh, their customers, uh, at least 25% of uh, all purchased uh, SaaS software is unused. And that, that's a minimum, uh, they think. Uh, here's a copy of the, uh, the title of the report was the CIO's missing key metric and cost cutting imperative in May of 2020. And we have a link to that in, uh, in our white paper. Um, so subscription licensing, SaaS licensing is part of that, obviously a general category of subscription licensing. Um, definitely gives you more control uh, than the previous uh, perpetual license model. So you can assign users. Um, you generally have the ability to transfer licenses uh, among users. And uh, even more so, you have the ability to scale uh, the number of users uh, up and down, which is uh, quite critical to uh, optimizing your costs, at least on, a, on an annual basis and uh, sometimes more frequently. Uh, but in order to really do those things, you really need to have actual uh, usage data of what applications uh, uh, users are actually using uh, or not using as the case may be. And this is an example of uh, some of the data that we get um, from Adobe. So you can see here some pretty expensive applications and actually uh, when they were last used. So this is the kind of data that you really need to have, uh, we claim on an automated uh, uh, basis. Uh, so what methods can you use today? Uh, these are the ones that uh, we see are the most important, uh, most practical anyway. So obviously data from software publisher portals, uh, uh, also uh, using uh, Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager, uh, formerly called SCCM, uh, single sign-on, uh, network traffic analysis, and the tools, uh, various SAM tools have different ways of uh, getting usage. So. We'll go into all of those briefly and the pros and cons. So software publisher portals, um, these are essentially ways that um, uh, organizations can purchase new licenses, can assign the licenses, and uh, hopefully get usage data on those licenses, whether they're being used or not and how often. Um, and examples uh, of these portals are obviously the Adobe Admin Council, uh, the Microsoft uh, Volume Licensing Service Center and the Microsoft Business Center, depending on your type of uh, licensing you do. And many other, uh, all the other vendors typically have these uh, same portals. So the pros are actually uh, great if the usage data is available and if it's accurate and detailed enough, useful enough, I should say. Uh, the cons are that uh, many, many of uh, the subscription software uh, uh, vendors or publishers really don't give you usage data. And if they do offer it, it's not detailed um, enough to make decisions. Um, many are not provided at all. Typical examples are uh, Adobe, uh, Microsoft Visio Project, Visio Studio, Power BI, I could go on. And many uh, SaaS and local applications, uh, it's not just Microsoft and Adobe, they're just picking on those because they're uh, uh, used by uh, pretty much everyone, but many, many other. SaaS vendors don't uh, uh, include usage data. Um, another uh, option is to use uh, Microsoft Endpoint Configuration Manager. Um, and uh, typically this tool is used by operations to deploy software in patches. Uh, it requires you to create a software metering rule uh, based on the file name or the original file name and the version, the language. Uh, you need to specifically identify that exe. Uh, and then of course you need to wait <laughs> to get results. Um, so based on uh, how impatient you are or, or how, how, how pressing you are on setting up that rule, you typically have to wait for six or nine, 12 months even for the results. 
And there's a limited number of applications that you could track on this, uh, basically because of bandwidth uh, and uh, endpoint utilization uh, characteristics. Uh, so you don't want to bog down the endpoint, uh, tracking every application on the host, obviously. Uh, so typically, um, you do have to wait. So the pros are uh, almost everyone has uh, endpoint uh, configuration manager uh, installed, but it does uh, the, on the con side. It does require you to set up the discovery rules. It's not automatic. Uh, you've got to identify uh, the correct file uh, to measure usage. Uh, they don't exactly uh, jump out right at you. Uh, then you've got to wait for the time to uh, see uh, who's actually used that file or not, or that application. And again, uh, you are limited to the number of files that can be monitored at any one time. So basically, you're going around and around this uh, um, cycle. So for, you know, say you've got application A, create the discovery rule, select the files, wait six, nine, or 12 months, then you go back and do the same thing for application B. So from a practical point of view, um, is it really helpful? Well, if you're only tracking a few applications, um, that's probably great. You can do that in advance and do that on a continual basis. But if you're tracking many, many SaaS applications or subscription licenses, you know, certainly over uh, uh, 10 or 20, uh, you're not gonna be doing that in uh, Configuration Manager. Uh, single sign-on is a, a, another method. Uh, this is uh, single sign-on basically allows your users to authenticate uh, one time to the SSO provider and uh, gives them access to multiple applications. Uh, and uh, some uh, 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 users have suggested using the uh, single sign-on logs to uh, determine uh, application usage. So the pros are obviously many organizations are using SSO. The cons on the other side are how accurate it is and how complete it is. Um, obviously, uh, this method won't cover any applications that are not uh, using uh, SSO. And uh, maybe the main uh, con is that uh, logging in to an application via SSO does not necessarily or even uh, usually uh, suggest usage. So many users may log in uh, first thing when they log in in the morning uh, to applications, but uh, they may not even use that application that day. So uh, that's always an issue. And again, also um, really doesn't tell you which uh, part of a package of applications are being used. So you may see that you're using uh, Microsoft 365, but are you using uh, Visio or, or uh, Project uh, or any of the others uh, that may be unclear. Uh, network traffic analysis. Um, this is uh, again uh, primarily handled uh, through firewalls with a feature called Cloud Access Security Broker capabilities. I know that's a mouthful, uh, but basically, it's uh, generally these uh, firewalls are used to uh, permit or block um, access to uh, SaaS uh, or other applications. Uh, so the method here is really to identify the applications by analyzing that network traffic. Uh, that's done through signatures um, and through uh, uh, basically analyzing those protocols um, and a lot of uh, heuristics, if you will. Uh, there's also, uh, as we'll see here, a fair amount of manual effort involved. Um, so it may not work for you, but it is certainly a method people are trying. Uh, a lot of organizations, first of all, uh, on the pro side, have advanced firewalls uh, and they can enable this feature or have it enabled already. Uh, but again, there's issues with the accuracy and completeness. Um, lots of issues uh, with trying to identify an application based on network traffic. Um, you've got to have a pretty extensive um, signature list um, and generally in the in the vendors, uh, 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 online user guides, they definitely mentioned uh, manual efforts in reviewing and analyzing those log files uh, and basically mapping those signatures to applications. So, um, and also there's lots of uh, uh, SaaS or if you want to call it subscription uh, licenses that are really not based uh, on continual network access. So you may, you may not access it at all. You may only access it once a month. Uh, so that will be uh, a difficult way to measure usage for those applications. Um, we'll go into how some SAM tools uh, approach this. Um, and uh, 
Uh, here's an example of a major vendor. Uh, in this case, uh, you have to identify what's called a key file in an MSI, that's a Microsoft uh, installer package. Uh, uh, what, if you identify the key file in that package, then they can track that. Uh, also, they, you can add, use add remove programs uh, or you can do a manual mapper uh, to create a registry entry. Uh, then you enable or disable those trackings. And then again, the, the other uh, boogaboo about these methods are you've got to wait six, nine or 12 months. Um, data is aggregated by the week, not by the day. So it's a little less granular than you may like, but uh, uh, maybe good enough. Um, and again, the executable that you identify may not or will not likely identify the package uh, was used or not. So you may identify uh, that uh, uh, a part of Creative Cloud or part of Microsoft, say uh, Outlook was used, but it may not be the entire O365 package, won't show any usage. So some issues there. Not sure what the pros of this method are compared to some of the others. Um, a, um, does require on the con side a lot of continual manual efforts to um, manually uh, create and choose that executable. Uh, you've got to make sure that it's uh, the right one, obviously. Um, and then uh, it won't cover per user installed software, just machine soft, uh, installed software. Um, often, uh, or it, usage can be reported for the wrong application, obviously, if you pick the wrong uh, 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 executable. Uh, the suites may not be reported uh, when the components are actually being used. And uh, it's really not tracked for non-MSI key MSI component files. And again, you've got to wait for the six, nine or 12 months for uh, results. So may not be ideal for your environment, but uh, yeah, in any case, SAM tool B, this is uh, what we call a browser extension. So these are essentially software applications that are installed on uh, the user's web browser. Uh, typically comes for Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and it's uh, looking at the browsing history and deducing from that browsing history which uh, applications uh, were accessed. Uh, so the pros are, uh, obviously, this uh, should work for uh, applications which use a web browser. Uh, the cons are, obviously, it's, it's fairly easy to avoid or remove the history. Um, uh, from web browsers. Um, GDPR issues, of course, uh, where that data needs to be anonymized, uh, which is less helpful than uh, you might want uh, in Europe, and uh, possible pushbacks. And a lot of SaaS applications actually do not use a web browser. They use an application themselves, so they don't go through a web browser. So those will be missed, uh, of course. Uh, SAM tool uh, C here is, again, an agent-based tool. Uh, this one um, automatically discovers uh, the last use times, uh, and it does that for all the applications on the host machine. Uh, this is automatically done. There's no manual setup required. Uh, and uh, the results are available immediately, so you don't actually need to wait um, six, nine, or 12 months to see that an application uh, has not been used uh, for that period of time. It does that uh, retroactively. Uh, there's a patent on this method, uh, US patent, and uh, but uh, currently it's available for uh, Windows only. So the pros are it's entirely automated, uh, the results are available immediately, and uh, which is very, very helpful because you may not know in advance uh, which uh, uh, software uh, publisher is uh, looking to uh, audit you or get your uh, uh, licensing data. Uh, and uh, it uh, covers all apps, uh, but only ones which have a footprint on the host machine. So all Adobe, Microsoft, 365, Visual Project, Power BI, et cetera, Oracle, JetBrains. The cons are, uh, does not cover the apps which have no footprint. So things like uh, Avalara, Bloomberg, Captera, et cetera, ServiceNow. And it does not currently cover non-Windows environments. Uh, some examples from this uh, tool. Uh, here we have, uh, uh, again, the Adobe usage data. And you can see here, uh, usage uh, last use times are can be quite old and immediately picks those up when it runs on the host machine. So that gives you a great opportunity to um, reassign those licenses or re reduce your licenses. And some of these are obviously 
quite expensive uh, uh, software. Uh, this is for a Microsoft project, same kind of an idea uh, where you immediately get the usage data. Uh, and again, we've removed obviously the computer and usernames, but you can identify it down to the specific users and machines. Uh, there's additional information available too. And we've done this for uh, Microsoft Visio, same idea. And again, this information is not available on the, uh, uh, the vendors or the publishers uh, portal sites, um, but it is available from the SAM tool. Um, and then again, here's an example with Oracle uh, VirtualBox, uh, which uh, it has an extension pack, which is uh, where they wanted to get the usage. You can get this data here. So in summary, um, we really think that the basis for optimizing your SaaS uh, spend um, is uh, based on actual uh, software usage data. Uh, but in order for that to be uh, practical, it really needs to be automated. Uh, by that, uh, we mean no manual efforts, it needs to be accurate. Uh, you can't have false positives. Um, and then uh, up to date. So you really want that data available uh, continuously. You don't have to, you don't want to wait six, nine or 12 months for that data. It becomes uh, pretty useless at that point. Uh, but of course, as in all things, <laughs> uh, one method may not uh, meet all your requirements. So uh, we suggest that you focus on the, the method that uh, will get you the, the biggest bang for the buck and then uh, uh, maybe look at others uh, at that point. So thank you very much. Uh, we do have a white paper, so uh, simply send us an email and uh, we'll send you a copy of that optimizing your SaaS spend. Thank you.